learning anatomy is hard, right? Eh, it depends. You can certainly make it harder for you by diving headfirst into muscle groups without having a solid foundation or take care of said foundation first so that drawing the actual musculature becomes a breeze. So in this video, I'm going to share with you an easy process that got me from this to this. Spoiler, it's mannequinizing. Let's go. All right, let's address the elephant in the room first. Proportions. And I'm going to use our trusty stick man for this first. And I could tell you, you know, to follow the plethora of tutorials and guides that tell you that an ideal male body is eight heads tall and blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go against current and tell you that the only proportions you really want to care about, at least for humans, are crotch in the middle, knee midway through a leg, elbow midway from shoulder to wrist. And that's it. Why? Well, because chances are you're going to morph your figures depending on gender, body type, age, and even style. Like if you draw anime characters, you're probably not going to make them eight heads tall, right? Especially not girls, right? Also, most of these hard rules proportions are going to fall short once you introduce the almighty and scary for sure. We're not going to dive into that right now since it's a topic for a whole separate video, but do realize how little these hard rules apply to actual illustration. Like take this one, like the hand is huge, but it's still correct. So with that out of the way, the one most important aspect you need to consider is making the character solid. I'm going to use a box for the head, a box for the chest, and one for the pelvis. Then I'm going to add cylinders for neck, connecting the torso, arms, legs, and then finally some wedges for hands and feet, just to keep them very, very, very simple. Please notice I did not do this. This is flat and it never happens. You always, always see perspective, even if you are right in front of the character. And this one is the most basic character you can draw. You have to start here. If you can't draw this mannequin, please don't try to add anything on top of your frame because it's really not gonna work out. So let's talk about some key points. Notice that the ribcage form needs to move with the shoulders more or less, so don't make the top box too big. This is not the actual size of a ribcage, which is this. It's just a simplification that I made. Then, relative positions. When you study reference, be mindful of the various positions of the limbs, uh, especially of joints. Like you wanna know where the wrist is, or at least where the hand is, the hips, knees, feet, elbows. Please don't break your characters. Female figures obviously have slightly different proportions. You want to edit the box of the chest a little bit and add some protrusion, unless the reference is Zendaya, of course. And usually the shoulders are slightly narrower and the hips a bit wider. Just bear in mind, the main masses are head, chest, and pelvis. Actually, I found that some people have trouble figuring out the orientation of the limbs, you know, because they're cylinders. And if this is the case for you, you can absolutely swap those for more boxes, like something like this. It's really just a matter of preference and how sensitive you are at figuring out orientation. And now let's see real quick how this applies to actual figures. At this point, you're probably thinking, Nemo, you amazing, godlike artist. I want to draw actual characters, not mannequins. Oh, all right, all right, my impatient friend. Let's use something slightly more complicated for the head. I still want to show side and front because that's really important. Then I'm gonna modify the box of the rape cage with something a little more like a vest, I guess. Use a sort of underwear shape for the pelvis and edit some of these cylinders into drumsticks or in general making them, you know, slightly more organic feeling. Obviously, real people have elbows and knees, 
So for now, I'm gonna put a box or maybe just even a line in place because I want to show the orientation of the joint. Because bear in mind, these are both hinges. So they can only move in one direction. They can only flex up and down. But while you can usually align the elbow box with the forearm, because that's basically part of the ulna, the kneecap is kind of free floating, let's say. Actually, it really is floating in front of the leg. So usually I just throw it in an in-between position between the two parts of the leg. Obviously, let's not forget about hands and feet. And it's easy enough to connect the waist since, well, we're used, still using some sort of boxy form, so that's easy enough. And lastly, let's not forget the ball joints. Uh, not, not there. Um, I'm talking about shoulders and hips, come on. For shoulders, I like to merge the ball of the joint with the upper arm, just because I like the form more. But I prefer to keep the hips to leg joint separate because for some reason it just feels like I'm stiffening the pose too much if I merge them. So key points about this. The drumstick of the form ends in a box and the same can be said for the lower leg. Make sure you do this because it's gonna be fundamental, especially for the wrist. Also, speaking of the lower leg, you do want to add a bit of a curve to it because otherwise the whole figure is gonna stiffen up a lot. This curve of the tibia, which is the main bone of the lower leg, is actually really important for gesture. You can use a box for the knee as well, especially where it's bent, but really the most important thing here is the orientation. And do separate hands and feet from forearm and, and lower leg because otherwise it's gonna look strange. Again, you can just merge them with a little bit of a squishy in-between form so that it does look like there is a joint in there. Okay, let's see some of these in action. And that's probably as far as you want to go for a long time. And trust me, if you can draw this, then it's really just about studying the main muscles one by one and laying those secondary and even tertiary forms on top. Like literally, you, you can just add them on top. Nothing else. It's gonna be so much easier. Of course, you can come up with your own version of the mannequin as you learn more. But if you have trouble remembering all of these, I actually made some convenient cheat sheets that you can download in the video description. Of course, it's free as always, don't worry about that. But in general, what do you think about these? Like, have you tried simplifying the body so far? Uh, do you have a favorite method of mannequinizing? Or what other issues did you have when studying anatomy? Let me know in the comments down below and hopefully it's gonna be material for another video. But remember, the body is squishy. It's made mostly of water, so try to get past the heart for mannequins as soon as you can. And organify, organiz, uh, organic, organize, make the forms look more organic, okay? And if you're still lost and need some extra help, you might want to check out my mentorship program, which is one-on-one -on -one and tailored to your specific needs and where you are in your art journey. Link on screen now and in the video description. Alright, that's all I got for you today. Go drawing now.